A couple were going out for a rare night out on the town. Yes, sir. They put on their best clothes, called a cab, and put the cat out. The taxi arrived, but as the couple walked out of the front door, the cat shot between the legs back into the house and up the stairs. Knowing that the cat would wreck the house while they were gone, the husband ran upstairs to chase the cat out again while the wife waited in the taxi. Since she didn't want the cab driver to know that the house would be left unoccupied, the woman explained to him, my husband is just going upstairs to say goodbye to my mother. A few minutes later, the husband reappeared and climbed into the taxi. <laughs> I can't even finish. <laughs> Sorry I took so long, he said. Stupid old thing. <laughs> Stupid old thing was hiding under the bed. <laughs> I can't finish. Hey, you have to. You have to finish it. Oh, yeah. I poked and prodded her with a hanger <laughs> to get her to come out. <laughs> okay. That's bad. I can't finish the house, isn't it? Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12 through verse 18. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into the spirit. For in fact, that body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. I want to ask a simple question this morning. How do you feel about your body? And I, I know it sounds like it's a crazy question, but you got used to some of those things with me. Most of us don't think too highly of our bodies. We're either too fat, or too skinny, too tall, or too short. Or missing parts. Or missing parts. I'm just going to get to that part later. <laughs> but we have too many missing parts. <laughs> a friend of mine was eating a candy bar in the bank, and she looked at the teller and says, and just blurted out, I'm filling in my dimples. <laughs> Obviously, most people don't think too highly of their bodies. So it's kind of strange that Paul would say in verse 27, Now all of you together are Christ's body. And each one of you is a necessary part. I want you to take just a minute and look at the person next to you and say, you are a part of the body of Christ. You are, you are part of the body of Christ. When you stop and think about it, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yes. As you look around and realize each one of us makes up a part of the body of Christ. And that includes you. And that includes me. When you look in the mirror, when you get up in the morning, you see yourself. Remind yourself, you are a part of the body of Christ. Paul tried to find a way to describe the church of Jesus Christ. And the illustrations he came back to several times was the body. Our body. In Romans, and Corinthians, and Ephesians, Paul makes over 30 references to the body of Christ. Those of us that know the Bible or those of us that 
are quite familiar with the Bible, we tend to skip over passages like this because if you're anything like me, I've heard messages on the body of Christ many times. And so we tend to skip over them because they seem so simple. And so we don't even stop and think about what that passage of Scripture is all about. After all, we know what a body is. Because we occupy one. We need to take the time and take some of these simple passages and just ponder them. Let God speak to our hearts about them and find out the differences and similarities between the body of Christ and the human body. The body God created is amazing. I want to give you just a few facts that I read just over this past week. The stomach's digestive system is strong enough to, to dissolve zinc and stainless steel. And copper too. And copper too. I'm sure there's lots of things it can dissolve. <laughs> the lungs contain over 300 million capillaries, which are tiny blood vessels. And if laid end to end, it would stretch 1,500 miles. All that in your lungs. A block of bone the size of a matchbox can support 18,000 pounds. In 30 minutes, the average body gives off enough heat to bring a half gallon of water to boil. <laughs> Some of it might happen a lot quicker, huh? Now, I, I wanted to tell you this one thing. I forgot to turn the coffee on, or the, the water on back here this morning. So when we got here, Linda says, you forgot to turn the water on. It took a half hour of electricity to boil that water. The focusing muscles of the eye move around 100,000 times a day. And that's just five facts about the human body. And it's fascinating to think how God has created you and I. Now, the human body has many parts, but all of those parts make up only one body. We see Paul as a determined, as a straightforward kind of guy that went through all kinds of things on his days on this earth. We see him as a tough guy that had Christians put to death. Yet when I look at verses 15 to 17, I see Paul with a sense of humor. Here he says, if the foot shall say, because I'm not a hand, I am not a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I am not of the body. But here's where I think he's got really a sense of humor. I wonder what Paul was thinking when he said, or what he was imagining when he said, if the whole body was an eye. Now, you, you've got to think about that one for just a second. <laughs> or, about the hearing, if the whole body was hearing, does that mean he's picturing in his mind that the whole body is an ear? <laughs> or the whole body is a nose? Paul had to have a sense of humor. Human body has many parts, but the many parts make up only one body. So it is with the body of Christ. Think of the body of Christ. Made up of parts just like the human body is. No matter what parts you are, we are a part of the body of Christ. We are a part of one body. You and I are a part of that same body of Christ. Each individual part of your body has one thing in common. 
That's you. You are the one that ties everything together. So it is. In the same way the church, the body of Christ, has a common denominator. And that ties everything together. And that is Jesus Christ. And he is described as the head of the body. Keep in mind that no two parts of the body of Christ are the same. And you may say, Greg, come on, a hand is a hand, foot's a foot. But I remind you, no two parts are identical. But they all have a place in the body. So why aren't more Christians the same? You know, as you look at Christians, you see them in all sizes and shapes, all temperaments, all different ages in the Lord. <laughs> Careful, honey. <laughs> Something else is going on back there. But let me put it like this. As we compare the body of Christ to our physical bodies, people are at all different ages in their walk with the Lord. And they are all at different levels of maturity in their walk with the Lord. Lord. Does that mean that they're not part of the body? Just because they're an immature Christian does not mean that they're not a part of the body. They are still a part of the body. This tells us here in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are to grow in the Lord. Once you become a Christian, you need to be continuing to grow in the Lord. <coughs> if our natural body doesn't grow, we become deformed. Same thing it is with the Christian. If we don't grow in the Lord, we become deformed. And it's my desire in my walk with God to continually grow, to continually mature in my relationship with Him. It's my desire to see each one of you continuing to grow in the Lord, continuing to mature in the Lord, drawing closer to Him. I don't want to see a deformed body of Christ. I want to see the body of Christ vibrant, alive, full of life, just like an army continuing to go forward. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. So that kind of tells you a little bit about children, right? So children in the body of Christ are the same way. And it says they desire that we no longer stay as children, but that we grow up. And I've heard the comment from people in here. They I don't want to grow up. I don't want to grow up. I like it where I'm at. But we need to grow in Christ. Listening to some people, all Christians ought to look alike, dress alike, think alike, talk alike, have the same haircut. Just let it be. <laughs> Only read the King James Version of the Bible. Listen to the same kind of music and raise our children the same way. In other words, those Christians think that all Christians should do things their way. I learned a long time ago, that ain't going to happen. Can you picture a whole bunch of little crates running around here in this church? No. I don't like that. Now, I, you, you better be careful because I can name some of your names too. And if you read between the lines of the scripture, if we had two identical people, one of them wouldn't be needed in the body of Christ. So it says we are all a part of the body. One Curtis is enough. <laughs> Amen. Curtis, I wasn't going to say that. I told you. You gave me money not to say it. I'll give you more later. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 25 and 26, it looks at the body in a little different light than how we've been talking so far. It says that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Uh-oh. I read that scripture and I thought, Lord, did I read that right? Let me see if I can get it right here. We are to care for each other, regardless of their age in the Lord, regardless of their maturity in the Lord, regardless if we agree on everything or not, regardless if you look the same or not, regardless if you like them or not, regardless if you understand them or not. I have people tell me frequently this phrase, but I can't love that person. I heard that probably three times this past week. I can't love that person. So I had that discussion with them this past week. One said, I hate so-and-so. How can he be a Christian and treat me that way? I said, hang on just for a minute here. You've asked Jesus to come into your heart. And he's asked Jesus to come into his heart. So now we have two Christians that quote-unquote hate each other. So what's going to happen when you both go to heaven? You both have accepted Jesus in your heart. What's going to happen? There's no room for hate in heaven. I said, so where are you going? You going up or you going down? He didn't like that comment. But I think it's something that we need to think about. God only has room for people that are going to love each other. All members should have the same care for one another. I don't care who you are. You will struggle with that one. And an individual that stole something from me one day, the lumberyard, we had him on camera. And I called the guy up, and I says, okay, I need that item back here before I go home tonight, which is at 5 o'clock. I will be waiting for you. 5 o'clock, he showed up. I have two Christian brothers that work with me. They met him at the door. They were kind of, they're a lot bigger than I am. <laughs> they're a lot bigger than I am. I just said, thank you very much. I don't want you stealing from me anymore. And the guy leaves, and these two guys that work for me says, what just happened here? Why didn't you get angry at him? We want to pound him. We didn't want him to leave. Except in a different way than walking. And finally, I just kind of broke down because I knew they were just pressuring me. And I says, look, I'm sinning in sight, okay? Is it going to make you happy? <laughs> There's a different level of maturity there. All members should have the same care for one another. Okay, let's look at verse 26. It says, if one member suffers, all the members suffer. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice. Think of it like this. If you stub your toe, or if you hit your thumb with a hammer, it's not just that part that hurts. So how many of you have stubbed your toe before? <laughs> Some of you just aren't being honest. <laughs> How many of you have hit your... Okay. 
hand with a hammer. Should I try something else if your hand stays up? It's not just that part that hurts. You hurt all over. You may even cry. And some words might come out of your mouth that you don't want me to hear. But you hurt. One of the biggest problems today is we're so busy we don't take the time to feel our brother's pain. Their hurts. Their sorrow. Linda and I went down to Fresno to do a funeral, which you all know about. We had her mom with us. And so my mother-in-law had stated a couple of times that she was hurting. Thought nothing of it. I mean, you know, in my own mind, my pressure was preparing for a service for the funeral, and my mind was just not on that. We checked into the motel that night, and we had dinner, and then we'd gone to Starbucks. We were sitting outside just busy. God really convicted me as it came up one more time for the third time. And I looked at her and I says, where do you hurt? She told me where she hurt. I said, all right, honey, we're going to pray for her. Specifically, that God will meet that need. Couldn't put it off anymore. I was so busy. So many things going on in my mind. God hit me right here with a two before. He says, son, that's not what you're here about. You're worried about something else, and this is more important. This is sitting right here in front of you. We need to care. And not only care, but we need to react to what's right in front of us. No matter how busy we are. And I get the comments so many times that, Craig, I, I didn't tell you because you're so busy. One of the things I am committed to doing here at New Hope, Assembly of God Church, is loving unconditionally. And to meet needs here as a church in any way that we possibly can. I've had situations come up that I just didn't know what to do or how to handle them. So I bow my head and say, Father, I need direction. I need your guidance. I need you to give me a clue on how to handle this. Because God, I'm your vessel. I'm that part of your body that's a vessel that wants to be used. I'm reminded of the story of the Good Samaritan, and I'm not going to tell you about it, except this part of it. You had a priest. You had a Levite. And they passed by a guy that was laying on the ground. And then the Samaritan, which we call a good Samaritan because of what he had done, he came by. And I'm going to bet that he was just as busy as the priest and the Levite. But he took the time to tend to the individual's needs. He took the time to put him on his donkey, take him into town, get him housing, get him care. And he even paid his bills. And then he came back and checked in on him. But God, I've got a job. I don't have time for that. I got a family. What do you expect to me? And an individual called me up one day and he says, I need you to pray for me. He said, I called my pastor. And he says, and I, I told him that I, my wife was in the hospital and I wanted him to go see her. And he says, he said he had a family, and he couldn't do that. 
from that moment on, I was that person's pastor. We spent the time together. We prayed that God would meet the need. That the members should have the same care for one another. When somebody hurts in the body of Christ, we need to react. The responsibility lies with every one of the members of the body of Christ. To love, to nurture, to care for. I want to start wrapping this up by saying just three words. And I said, start wrapping it up. I need you. A few weeks ago, I shared with you the story of Paul and how he said, pray for me. And you guys have responded to that in a tremendous way. I have felt your prayers in such a neat way as we have gone through and ministered and had some very serious times of ministry for people. I have felt that I was lifted up in prayer by you. So now I say these three words again. I need you. <coughs> you think of what Paul is saying here is we're all interconnected. We're all apart. Each part is important. I need you. And you need me. And we all need each other. You and I are the hands that Jesus needs. You and I are the arms, the feet, the eyes and the ears. God uses you and I to fulfill what he wants done in the body of Christ. What he wants done here on this earth. Think about that. God uses you and I to get done the job that needs to get done. And if we don't do what God wants us to do, nothing will happen in the body, happen in the body of Christ. The church will go nowhere and it will do nothing. You are the mouth that God uses. You are the hands that God uses. You are the feet that God uses. You may be the miracle that someone needs in their life. If you have asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, if you've asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, then you are a part of the body of Christ. My question to you this morning is, what part are you? What part of the body of Christ are you? And are you willing to be used? Are you willing to reach out and do and speak and encourage minister to, care for one another. Heavenly Father, God, I love you. Father, this body that you created is amazing. The body of Christ is truly awesome. Father, I just pray this message reaches home as we reach out to this community. God, as you put it on our hearts to do different things, that we wouldn't hesitate, but we would reach out. That we'd be there for them to meet the needs as they are presented to us. Lord. Not only as they're presented to us, Lord, but that as you speak to our hearts, we listen, we hear, and we would react. And I thank you for that, Lord. I'd like every head bowed and every eye to remain closed just for a moment. <coughs> I mentioned to you that if you have asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, 
You've asked him to forgive you of your sins. You are a part of that body of Christ. And I'm wondering if there's anyone here this morning that hasn't done that and that you want to do that right now. If you just lift up your hands. Man, I see that hand. Is there anyone else here this morning? That you would ask Jesus to come in and be a part of that. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I see this hand. I know that you've seen the hand a lot. And that you do a work here. I'd like you to pray this prayer with me if you would. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new in you. Amen. Amen. Folks, I love you. You are a special part of the body of Christ. Every one of you is needed. Every one of you is a special in God's eyes. And you're special in my eyes. I love you. I love you.